all three of you do work that shines a spotlight on communities that typically haven't really been heard. It's pretty early in my transition. I would walk down the street and people would yell, that's a man, and people would misgender me. And it was such a deeply humiliating and shaming experience. My mission has been about owning every single aspect of who I am as a woman, as a trans person. The fastest growing group of Americans happen to be Latino. How can we basically change the conversation in America if we're not reflecting the voices of the second largest group of Americans. I was such a shy kid growing up. I feared being rejected. I feared being called stupid. And I was actually cyberbullied a year before actually starting YouTube. I took the step to start posting videos online. It was out of my comfort zone, but I did it anyway. If I wasn't bullied, if I didn't go through that experience, I wouldn't have been able to achieve so many things that I've been able to do. Self-love is such a crucial issue, I think, for women of all backgrounds. All of these movements are coming together, and it's a matter of having those conversations with your friends. You're influencing them in ways that no organization can. Tell us your best story of when someone came up to you and said, you changed my life. What I do is online, and so I just see tons of tweets and comments every day, which can be very touching when someone tells me that I've inspired them to love themselves. There was a group of young women that they came up to me and they said, we know that all of us exist, but we never know how powerful we are together. There was this like 10 year old, like nine or 10 year old girl, and her parents said, we drove nine hours to hear you speak because we just wanted our trans daughter to see someone trans and successful, for her to know that that is possible for her.